So I've been using Vim, more specifically NeoVim, for the past two years, and now it has become a core piece of my daily workflow. The reason I like it so much is because it keeps getting better the more you use it. With normal IDEs, I found that my productivity would plateau quite quickly. But with Vim, I keep discovering new features and ways of doing things, even after years of using it. In this video, I won't be going over the basic motions. I want to focus specifically on some of the lesser known, but still amazing tricks and tips that I wish I had known earlier. Let's start with the first one. If you're watching this video, you probably know the classic way to exit Vim with colon WQ to save and quit or Q exclamation mark to quit without saving. But did you know there are quicker shortcuts for exiting Vim? For example, if you made some changes and you want to save and quit, what you can also do is simply type capital Z, capital Z, and that's it. Now let's open this file back up. Let's make some more changes. And you can also quit without saving with ZQ. It's a small trick, but it can speed up your workflow, especially if you are in and out of files quite frequently. For this next tip, I opened a Python file. Let's say I wanted to select the content inside of the current set of parentheses. So the way I initially learned it was with vi opening parentheses. And if I wanted to select the content only inside the curly braces, I would type vi opening curly brace. This is perfectly valid, but depending on your keyboard layout, your curly braces or parentheses might be a bit inconvenient to reach. And there's actually an easier way to do this. So if we wanted to select the content inside of the parentheses, we can also type VIB, and this is a bit more accessible on the keyboard. Now to select the content inside of the curly braces, the equivalent of this would be VI capital B. Now, of course, this also works with other motions. So if I wanted to change everything inside the parentheses, for example, I could also do CIB, and this would remove everything inside the parentheses and put me in insert mode. For the next tip, let's create a few lines of text. For example, we could have hello world, goodbye moon, and a, B, C, D, E, F, G. Let's duplicate this a couple of times. All right. And now let's say we wanted to wrap each of these lines into a B HTML tag to make them bold. So what we can do is go into visual block mode with control V and then go down to the bottom, then go into insert mode with capital I add the HTML tag, and then escape. And this will automatically apply this change to all of the lines. But now how do we add a closing tag to each of these lines? It seems a bit challenging because they have each a different length, so we can't simply select and go down as we did before. To solve this problem, let's hit G, V. This will select the last highlighted text, so we are back in visual block mode. And now let's type dollar sign to go to the end of the line. And from here we can type capital a to append to the end and now we can type the closing tag hit escape and this will apply the change to all of the lines so this was actually two tips in one we've seen how to make a change to multiple lines at the same time but also how to highlight the last highlighted text again another motion i find myself using quite often is to use tilde to toggle the case of what's under the cursor so for example if we wanted to have a capital h here then we could just say tilde and this will make it a capital h and we can also undo this by pressing tilde again. We can also apply this to a word. In this case, we would type G tilde and then a motion, so for example, W, and this will apply the toggle case to the whole word. Now we can also get really fancy and do something like G tilde IT for inner tag, and this will capitalize everything that's inside of the B tag. For the next tip, I have this JSON file here with this messed up indentation. Now this is super annoying to clean up, but since we're using Vim, this is actually not a problem at all and actually really easy to fix. All we need to do in this case is type GG to get us to the top of the file, then equals and capital G to go to the bottom. And this will re-indent the whole file automatically for us. Now since we're already here, another super useful tip is to use the percent sign to jump between matching pairs of parentheses or brackets or pretty much anything actually. So if I wanted to jump to the closing curly brace here, I could just type percent sign. And this works equally as well with the um, square braces, for example. So in this case, now if we are on the square braces, I can also type percent sign to jump between them. Next, I have some tips for getting in and out of Vim quickly. So now we have this session open. Let's say we want to quickly return to the terminal, but not have to reopen all the buffers the next time we enter Vim. So what we can do is actually put it in the background by typing control Z 
and this will suspend Vim and put it in the background. Now we can do anything we want in the terminal. And if we want to return to Vim, all we need to do is type FG, hit enter, and then Vim is pulled back into the foreground. Now, if you want a more persistent solution, you can also create a Vim session. For this, we have to go into command mode with colon and then type MK session. And then we have to give it uh, a file name. So for example, session.vim. And now if I if I exit out, we can see that the session.vim file got created. Now if I go back into Vim, you can see that now I'm back at my starting screen. But I can source this session file. And now we are back where we left off previously. Now you could map this to a keybind to quickly save a session and uh, reload a session if you want to. Or you could create a function that runs every time you start Vim that checks if the session file exists. And if it does, it loads your previous session. For the next tip, we need a URL. So let's go back into the Fast API project and open up the um, README. So here there are a lot of URLs. Let's say I wanted to check out the first one in the browser. So what I could do is go here, highlight uh, whatever is in the quotes, yank it, go into my browser, paste it, hit enter, and then I'm on the website. But in Vim, there's actually a much easier way to do this. All we need to do is press GX, and it opens up the URL under the cursor inside the browser, which is pretty awesome. Now we can do the same thing with files, actually. So imagine we had some sort of file path here let's say i don't know the path to my vimrc file and we wanted to open this file that's now under under the cursor then what we can do is press gf and it will open up this file so gx to open up a url and gf to open up a file pretty cool now another feature that i wish i had known earlier because it significantly improved my vertical navigation in large files is vim marks so if we go to a file like this that has a lot of lines and let's say we go down a bit and we we are working somewhere around here and probably we want to be able to easily return back to this location where we are working so what we can do is press m and then some other letter so for example a and this will set a mark at this location. So if I go back to the top of the file with GG and I want to return to the location where we are currently working, I can type quote and then the name of the mark. So in this case, it was A. And we are right back to where we left off. Now, since we used a lowercase letter, this only works inside the current file. If you want to jump between marks in different files, you have to use capital letters. So instead of typing M lowercase A, we would type M uppercase A. And then if we're in a different file and we want to jump back to our previous location, we can just type quote uppercase A and we are right back at the previous location. Now, speaking of vertical navigation, a super essential Vim motion is to be able to jump to a specific line. So the classic way to do this is from command mode, so colon, and then you type the number of the line, let's say 40, and then hit enter and you go to that line. This is perfectly valid, but there's a quicker way to do this. You can also just type 12, for example, and then capital G, and this will also take you to the exact line number. I want to show you one last motion. For this, I need to go back to the previous file. Let's remove all the content for now and create a few new lines. So, for example, hello world, uh, goodbye moon again. Now, let's say I want to have all of this on one line. So the cumbersome way would be to go to the start of the second line, type capital D to delete it, go to the first line, go to the end of the line, paste, and delete the line below. But this is quite a lot of steps and there's actually a much easier way to do this. So the more efficient way to do this would be to type capital J, which joins two lines on the same line. Now this will insert a space between the two lines. If you don't want this, let's undo this first, you can prefix the command with G. So then it becomes GJ and you don't have any more unwanted space. So there you have it. Those were my top lesser known Vim tricks and tips. I hope you learned something today. If you did, please leave a like and please consider subscribing if you want to see more content like this in the future. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time. Bye.